I mean, cross was a sign of shame. You did not want to go to the cross. Mentioning the cross back then was like mentioning the electric chair in modern day. A terrible way to die. You did not want to go to the cross. But you know, as, as Christians, you know, we see this, this thing in the Word over and over again that, that suffering is the path to glory. You know, we, we, we want the glory, but for us to glorify God, guess what? There's going to be suffering. His son did it. And remember when Jesus talked to those two in the road to Emmaus, he said, Ought not the Son of Man to have suffered that he might enter into his glory? Peter speaks about the same thing, suffering. You know, when you suffer, I mean, I'm talking about for godliness. I'm not talking about you going down the interstate after church doing 80 miles an hour and you get pulled over by police. You know, I wouldn't sit there in the car and say, Lord, I'm suffering for your name. That's the wrong type, folks. If you steal something from a store and you get caught and you go to jail, you know, that's not the suffering we're talking about. If your mama tells you not to touch the stove, you touch it and get burned and your, your hands burn. Right? We're but the suffering for godliness now, if you want to suffer for, for Jesus, all you got to do is follow Him. And there will be suffering. There will be opposition, right? It will come against you. But you see, when you do it with a conscience towards God, and you bear it patiently, God is glorified. You see? That's how God gets glory. Because here's His creation who has a free will, and they're willingly following God, even in the midst of suffering. If you take Joseph, for example, in the Old Testament, Joseph. Joseph suffered, didn't he? I mean, that's, that's some real suffering. And the word of the Lord, the Bible says, tried Joseph. And so Joseph suffered. But when it came time, when, when, the, when there was a time where Joseph Joseph was abased, but then the Lord exalted him. And when, remember when his brothers, uh, they thought that for sure Joseph's going to kill us. And Joseph said those famous words, you know, that what, what, what you meant for evil, God's meant for good. You see, he glorified God in his life through that. Now think about it. Couldn't God just sovereignly cause there to be no famine? You know what I mean? Could have God done things differently? But you see, he let Joseph walk through some real valleys. And in those valleys is where we grow. Right? In those, those places of darkness when we're going through, those are the times that we really grow. And we bring glory to God. We do it right. We've got a good attitude and we, we take it patiently. We bring glory to God. And so, um, and Jesus continues, verse 2, As you have given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal, and this is life eternal, that they might know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on the earth. I have finished the work that you gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. Jesus experienced glory with the Father. And now he was saying, Lord, uh, Father, I'm, you're going to glorify me and I'm going to glorify you through this. And then he goes on and he continues to say about glory. Verse 22, the glory which you have given me, I will give unto them, speaking of us, that they may be one even as we are one. Verse 24, Father, I will that they also whom you have given me uh, with me, uh, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory. So the glory of God uh, changes us. When we experience the glory of God, something happens in us. And that's why we pray, Lord, let your presence be here, right? Let your glory fill this place. Like in Solomon, when the, when the temple was being completed and, and the dedication, the priest.
priests could not minister in there because of the glory that fell. Now, so the glory of the Lord, that's what we want to experience uh, in our relationship with God. We want His glory to, for us to experience it and to go out to the world, right? Remember, Jesus talked about letting your light shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So you see, God is worthy of glory. It's not that God is, uh, like some enemies of the gospel say that, that God is uh, insecure. He needs people to tell him how great he is. That's not it at all. You know, when something's worthy of something, it, it's worthy. It's, it's worthy of honor, of value, of, of glory. Well, God is, He's worthy of all those things. He's worthy to be worshipped, to be praised. And um, because of that, He allows us to experience His goodness. The only, the only uh, response to the goodness of God is, God, you're worthy. Right? That's the only response. And so, um, you know, as we've been preaching on, and Mike has preached on a Wednesday or, or two Wednesdays, you know, about God using us. That we are fit for the Master's use. And one of the ways that gets us there is the fear of the Lord. And so that's what I want to look at this morning. I want to share that about glory because it ties in in the overall picture. Because we want to experience the glory of God. Is that right? Yes. We want to, uh, His presence, in His presence is fullness of joy. And we want that presence here. You know, the last two, uh, like Wednesday night, we had some prayer afterwards. And God was touching people. The Holy Spirit was touching people. Jesus